The Prevention of War, including an interview with Rudy Assertion, Public Relations Director, the American Legion War Memorial Commission, San Francisco. What is the topic of your article? He asked, when there we met. When an interview for Poetic Refreshment I was introduced to get. The prevention of war, I said with strength and a pleading in my eyes. One that begged with love I felt indeed, that I yearned he'd recognize. Sit down, he replied respectfully. Your timing is superb. We have just finished some research which he began to share in word. Among the things he revealed to me, profound for this report, was how much thoughtful heart and skill is spent on tools of last resort. He likened it to art forms which touch that goosebump nerve in me, for that means labor born of love envisions their success to be. All the soulful planning which gave the weapon form meant all that time and energy aimed to make cold whom life made warm. I left the ambulance to conjure verse after seeing people die, Believing how we feel inside always gives our actions why. I surrendered pay and title as an Oakland paramedic to defend life as a poet from disrespect's real epidemic. The heart that drives an artist who prepares to meet the worst wants to ensure that when life's threatened, its existence is not cursed. What can one expect if so much heart goes to such cause? When weapons are constructed, use often follows unseen laws. And that is what he told me. That they found that if a weapon has been created, it will be used. And that was basically what the report conclusion was. The weapons created, it will be used. (sighs) He went on to say they studied too the evolution of such means. From small arms to the hydrogen bomb, our need for peace now clearly screams. We are at a point in history when potentials are quite bleak, and it is in such times of challenge that our will cannot be weak. The presence of humanity is more fragile than our tools. Though we've unleashed creation's power, it can destroy if we are fools. If we, as a thriving species, who have proven we can rise, who, from the ground and all its elements, turn thoughts to planes that fly the skies, were to harness our abilities and the soldiers and what soldiers true possess, instead of into combat, into the heavens we could press. By mastering the depths of earth and the pressures of the sea, as our roots reach in the ground, outer space can bloom our tree. If our sights were set so far ahead with belief that we are loved, then the origin who branched us all can prove our place round stars above. But if we are too cowardly to attempt such fateful track, history confer- if we are too cowardly to attempt such fateful track, history confirms that war of the future makes a wreck. The limits of resources and the ownership of land always finds that combination leads to strategies well planned that can take by force the wanted source of what the wanter does desire and against whom life created Hell unleashes, hell unleashes, summon fire. But there is hope. Now I find that this is where the second half of my signature poem, that is now a song since the dawn of recorded history, comes from. Whether you believe we were created or we are forms of evolution, that we are life right here and now needs no false convolution. We are that link of yesterday that meets up with tomorrow. We are the ones who build a world that can bring pleasure, pain, or sorrow. But it's not enough to just say love, live in peace, and never fight. If our population never thinned, lack of food might be our plight. Unless we broaden our horizons to include rich outer space, where minerals and resources can sustain us off Earth's face, then realities of death by war will always be around because people become subjects to those who want to own their ground. A proposition for survival. What if each country now existing, in every family name within, were given plots among the stars so that such efforts might begin to focus our attention on making that dream real so the lands of distant planets the adventurers can feel? 
Humans are amazing. Just look at what we've done and think of our potential and stars as warm as our own sun. Education is that master tool whereby impossible is not and from what never was before we invent with what we've got. Cars and planes and rocket ships, cell phones, games and satellites, electricity and processed fuel to keep us warm on freezing nights. Buildings a hundred stories tall and chambers deep in earth and submarines on ocean floors all prove we can be near our birth. Instead of being foolish forms who wilted despite chance, we can populate the heavens and prolong our species dance. Our bodies are quite delicate, and our chemistry as well, but that indeed we are beloved, religion's oracles still tell. Instead of into hopeless doom of what keeps happening again, we can evolve in sweet creation so that the cosmos welcome men and the women who beget them from the tender of the womb, who nurse with their own nipples, not to send love to its tomb. There is a truth to our equality that many factors can obscure, but that we are born and some day die is a common ground that's sure. But what we can accomplish while we are still alive should inspire our togetherness to find a way that we can thrive. Because making friends is always better than confrontations with a foe. So instead of into battles, into great destiny, let us go, please. August 21st, 2005. This is Stegosaurus. Today is May 22nd, the year 2020. 15 years and one month and one day later. Here it is. Well, I hope you enjoyed that.